Let's discuss the different ways that you can make payments directly out of Zero. Now, at the time of this recording, Zero had just recently announced that they are partnering with Bill to bring some of the bill payment functionalities directly into Zero. How that's going to work uh, remains to be seen, but hopefully in this next year, we're going to see some of those capabilities come to Zero. But for now, the core functionality will allow you to make payments two ways. And the first is to cut and print checks from zero. So you can customize your check style in zero and print out your own checks to mail out to vendors. And then the second is to create a bank file or a batch payment file, which you can export to a CSV format and then import to your bank to have them facilitate the payments for you. So let's take a look at both scenarios and how that works. So on the awaiting payment tab, let's just demonstrate um, a, a single check payment. So let's actually go through and maybe select a couple of these transactions here. And we are going to make a payment to these three transactions. So let's make a payment and we are going to pay by check for these three bills. And we'll click continue. And the first thing that you wanna do here is just make sure that you're paying from the correct bank account in zero. Right now it's defaulting to Stripe, which we don't want. I'm gonna change that to the checking account. And zero is gonna automatically populate the next sequence in these number of checks here. So if that is not correct, what you can do is you can head over to check numbering and then update that number here on the screen. But it all looks good. So we have one bill here, we've got the check number, the payee. You wanna make sure that you have the correct address on file, because this is gonna get printed on the check as well. And then the memo line also gets printed. So if there's any reference numbers, invoice numbers, etc., that need to be placed on the check itself as a reference, so that when the vendor receives a check, they know which account to apply this to. This is where you can put that information. Here are the amounts. And then here's the check style. So if you've created or customized different check styles, so maybe you have a couple different check stocks that you're using for your client, those would appear here. And in this scenario, we only have the standard, so we are going to select standard. From here, what we can do is actually save this batch. We can save and print the PDF or we can export the checks to CSV. And depending on how you want to save the backup, maybe you want to save and print to PDF. And I'm going to do this just so we can see what the PDF file is going to look like. So I'm going to pull over the PDF file here so we can take a look at it. And this is what this file is going to look like, or this is what the check is going to look like. And again, this can be customized in the settings. We'll cover that in a minute, but as you can see, Here's kind of the layout. You can update the logo, the address for the issuer. So this is the demo company in my example. Here's the vendor, Swanson Security, and so on and so forth, right? So that's what it's gonna look like. Now, if we wanna customize the check styles, we'll head over to the settings. So under demo company, the name of the company in zero, we'll head over to settings. And then if you scroll down, we can now uh, customize the check styles and how they're going to print. So you'll need to come here if you want to customize maybe the margins, maybe it's not printing correctly on the check stock. So I highly recommend that you test printing a single check before you go ahead and print out all the checks just so that you don't waste your check stock. Okay, let's upgrade to the new check style and see what we're dealing with here. So here's the standard the style name, so you can update this to, to fit your template name. We've got three different layouts, check at the top, check in the middle, or check at the bottom, depending on the check stock, stock that you've purchased. We've got pre-printed stock, or we've got blank stock. So play around these things. And then you also have the ability to move these fields around, right? The payee name, the amount in words, the amount. So if it's just slightly off, from your check stock, you can move those around. And then you also have the ability to customize some of the fields that are actually printing on the check voucher um, itself. So you can take some of this out. You can also add the check number if needed into the check voucher. So that is how you pay bills via check in Zero. Let's go back to the payables by going to business and bills to pay. And we'll cover the, the second payment option, 
which is um, exporting a file to import into your bank, and then they'll make the payments from there. So we'll head over to the awaiting payments tab. And we are going to select a few of these bills here. And we're going to make a payment. Okay. Here's the other option, batch payment. All right, so the payment date is going to be, let's say the 10th. So that's one week from today. We're going to select the appropriate bank account that we're making the payments from. It's checking account. And then any details that need to be added here, amounts, just making sure that everything looks good to go before you make the payments. So let's go ahead and make a payment here. So the batch payment has been created. I can now export the batch file to the bank as well as send remittance advice emails. So really it's a two-step process. If your bank isn't sending out communications to the vendors, then you can do so. If you have the information, the email addresses in here. So let's click send remittance and see what that looks like, right? Three of the items were removed. So basically there are some bills that are not applicable, uh, but we have one here for trucks and property management. Here's that email. So we can just send out an email directly from zero to let this vendor know that, hey, your payment is going to be, is on the way. And then let's go ahead and export the batch file. We'll open it up and see what that looks like. Okay, and it's gonna look something like this here, right? We have a payment to Garrison for salary, and then we have a payment to US Treasury, and that's gonna combine the two bills together. We had two bills for this particular vendor. So this is a file that you would then maybe configure if you need to, to import into your bank. So those are the two different ways that you can make payments directly out of zero um, as of today.